So what you're telling me is that collaboration, of course, is the wave of the future. It's the lifeblood of businesses for now. But especially in 365, it can be very complex on the infrastructure side with additional groups created uh, almost every time you click that share button. And keeping track of who has access to what can be a challenge uh, if you're trying to go ahead and do it manually. Hey, Ryan. I know we've been talking a lot about sharing collaboration, sort of the work anywhere from any device at any time, digital transformation we've really been going through for the last few years. So let's talk about what happens when you share, for example, in 365. Yeah, you know, Killian, that's it's a great point. And, and I think something to throw out there is, you know, oftentimes we start to think about sharing as this, this bad thing, especially from like a security perspective. Uh, when it, I don't think that's actually true. You know, sharing is important. That's it's really the whole reason why a lot of organizations are moving to a lot of these collaborative data repositories like the cloud services. Um, but the important thing to keep in mind is, you know, when we allow end users to share data, uh, we're, we're really taking the, the control of the permissions out of the IT and the security side and putting it into the hands of the actual end user. Yeah, that makes sense. We actually have a little bit of an illustration to to highlight some of this. So just like you said, really, we're putting the control in the end user's hands. And specifically around 365, when we talk about sharing, we really mean one of three different things. So either sites, so full SharePoint Online sites, for example, folders either within SharePoint Online or OneDrive, and then files in either one of these repositories. So it can be a number of different uh, items, depending on scale, I suppose, uh, from largest to smallest, that can be shared. Yeah, and you know, depending upon the configuration settings of the organization and that specific cloud app, um, and you know what the end user is trying to achieve, there are different levels of that sharing capability as well. You know, actually, you know, who it's being shared with. Uh, at the most basic, you can share out direct links to you know either individual users, both internal to the organization or external to the organization. Uh, but then you can also share out domain wide access. You know, this might open it up to the entire organization. Uh, and then, of course, even on top of that, which sometimes is considered the riskiest, uh, you have things like public access, so publicly accessible links, links that are you know, accessible to anybody outside of the organization. Yeah, the, the interesting thing, too, even going maybe one level deeper behind this is on the infrastructure side, every time that link button is clicked and something gets shared, it could potentially create brand new security groups. So when you share that file in um, in SharePoint Online or in OneDrive, what ends up happening is you create a local group and you put that user inside of the group and it provisions access. So while it might seem kind of very easy and slick uh, to, to do in practice, and that's what it's designed to do, uh, on the back end, it can make figuring out that permissioning and the access much more difficult because of all the, the potential nested groups kind of down the tree there. Yeah, you know, Killian, this is actually, a, it's a pretty complex topic. And if you think about it, you know, this is how we get to that state of, you know, very complicated permissions. And, you know, we're giving a lot of power to the end users. You know, I, I know it's easy to, to share this out from the actual applications themselves, whether it's, you know, from the app, you know, from the computer, but it's, it's given a lot of power to the end user. And it's something that gets a lot harder to manage over time. Absolutely. I mean, a perfect example of this too, is just right before we recorded, I shared a copy of this PowerPoint right from the app, click the button right there, put in your name, Ryan, went off to you. And on the back end, again, it made those those infrastructure changes really with the permissioning to make sure that you had access so we could collaborate. So it's it's really powerful and effective. But as you said, it it can be challenging to wrap your arms around. So with that in mind, what what recommendations would you have for organizations who have adopted or are looking to expand their cloud footprint? You know, Kelly, a lot of things that we need to focus on when it comes to securing the data, especially when we're putting it in the, you know, the hands of the end users like this. You know, first and foremost, I think it's important for organiz organizations to identify what types of data you know, is out there and, you know, obviously the, where the most important data is, whether that's, you know, PII, you know, intellectual property, you know, identify where the sensitive data is located and let's make sure we limit the exposure of that data. You know, folks probably shouldn't have the ability to share out files with social security numbers to you know, external users outside the organization. So identify the data, understand where it's located, understand who has access to it today and make sure we're, we're limiting and reducing that exposure, you know, for the potential collaboration going forward. Makes sense. So what you're telling me is that 
Collaboration, of course, is the wave of the future. It's the lifeblood of businesses for now. But especially in 365, it can be very complex on the infrastructure side with additional groups created uh, almost every time you click that share button. And keeping track of who has access to what can be a challenge uh, if you're trying to go ahead and do it manually. 